Hello, everybody. Welcome again to another edition of Badger Blitz TV. I'm Jake Kolkarowski, senior writer at BadgerBlitz.com, your rivals.com destination for all things Wisconsin athletics from the recruiting trail inside Camp Randall Stadium and, of course, uh, on the court of the Kohl Center. But coming up next week, you know, we have the NFL Scouting Combine going on right now on Thursday. Next week will be Wisconsin's Pro Day, so hopefully BadgerBlitz.com will be inside the McLean Center watching various Badgers competing and trying to show off in front of many NFL personnel talking to us now. We've talked to a bunch of former Badgers from January on about their their training and their journeys uh, to lead to the NFL. We got one more coming up here. Number one for the Badgers, both on the field and uh, in our hearts. If I can get this player picture shows up real quick. Is it going to act up? Yep, my software's going to act up. Regardless, we got number one, Fayon Hicks, here on the show Fan man, really good seeing you. There's the picture. Uh, and then now we have him up here. Fan man, good talking to you. How you doing? And, and welcome back to Madison. Hey, I'm, I'm doing good, man. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. Awesome, man. So, you know, for those that don't know, where have you been? I, you know, taking a look, talking to a UW official, you kind of sent me some of the info where you've been training. But tell the Wisconsin yeah. faithful where you've been, where you've been training, and, and how everything's been going since yeah. uh, your last game as a Badger. Yeah, I've been back home in the good sunshine state of Florida, down in Fort Lauderdale, uh, training at my uh, old trainer uh, facility called Perform. Um, you know, it's been good to be back home down in Miami and Fort Lauderdale, so it, it was fun. So for those that uh, asked, just uh, how warm was it out there for, for those that have dealt with uh, <laughs> some, some of the weather that you, you've been able to have some nicer temperatures, yeah. I think? Yeah, well, the first week I got there, I kind of brought the cold back with me from Madison. It was about <laughs> 50s and 40s surprisingly but then it, it uh in a couple of weeks it kind of got even hotter around like in the 80s some days in the 90s so it's always good when it's in the 80s you know that's a good thing yeah no I, how many, for those that don't know i used to live in florida as a teenager and so going through two days in high school for football like that in that 90 degree weather you sort of miss it uh not gonna lie when you have these negative temperatures that we've had uh you know maybe in january and february but how how has the you know, training been for you. If you can go through, I've asked some of the other players, you know, uh, we've had Josh Seltzner on and uh, we've talked to, you know, Leo Chanel, John Chanel, others. How's your training been down in Florida? And just what are some of the things that you've, you know, what's been the routine for you? Yeah. Um, the training was good. Um, it's very rigorous. Uh, you're basically doing two a days. So, you know, I wake up probably like at six thirty in the morning, you know, I eat, um, I'll go on the field for about two hours. So we'll do like speed work on Mondays uh, and then top end speed on Thursdays and then position work on Tuesdays and, uh, and Fridays. Um, and then Wednesdays you'll have off. So, and then I'll probably get like a, a hour and a half break and then we'll do another two hours in the weight room, which starts around like 12, 15. And, um, and when you're done with that, uh, you got to do rehab. And any time, you know, just take care of your body. So you spend about like another three hours doing that. And then, um, I actually, after all that, I would do Pilates every day. So um, that was just something I kind of wanted to do. I thought it would help my game and help me prepare for the next level. So I was doing Pilates um, for about an hour every day. And that was a cool experience, kind of different. <laughs> so, I think everybody around me in there was, was, was old people, so it was kind of different. <laughs> I thought it helped me out a lot, though, during my training. So I did Pilates every day. And then Wednesdays, we'll have, like, a pool workout. And then Saturdays, we'll do yoga. So that's just kind of what my routine was, and you know, um, just kind of focus on getting faster, and you know, and, you know, just getting better in all the drills that we're going to be doing that project. So let's back up to the Pilates. Just you know, how you said it helped you. How do you feel it helped you training wise? Yeah. And you know, obviously you do speed work. You know, you're used to conditioning that way. You know, a lot of players do yoga, but just what did Pilates do for you? Yeah, I feel like Pilates was more of a uh, how you say injury prevention type workout. Um, you work the muscles that you normally wouldn't work out, but it's in your hips, you're growing. Uh, it was a lot of core, definitely. <laughs> uh, a lot of core. Um, that was the hard part about it. But just working like the little muscles in, in your shoulders, you know, all types of stuff, you know, I feel like it helped me, you know, maintain my training. Um, and the last thing you want is any type of injuries during this time because, you know, every day and every week matters. You know, you only have a certain amount of time to maximize your ability to go out there and perform on pro day. So I uh, say within that too, I mean, with, with, as a, you know, student, you know, former student athlete there, have you noticed the difference of just 
not having to deal maybe with the, have you had to deal with any additional academic side or whatnot on your end or whatnot while still training? Because I know others have, you know, you're just fully focusing on training now. Yeah, some some guys, if they haven't graduated yet, they'll probably be taking online classes. But luckily, you know, I was able to graduate, you know, before, um, you know, training. So I graduated this past December. So I'm pretty much all good on the school side. So I, I have been able to, just, you know, focus on just training, which is a lot different than it's something I never really did before since I came to college, um, which is spending the whole, you know, these next, you know, these past two months just focusing on training with no school. And it allows you to maximize every hour of the day, honestly. You know, you're not going to class, so this is what you do. This is what you, this is what your job, you know, hopefully. So, you know, you spend all those hours just, you know, focus on getting your body right and, you know, the mental side of football. And so, you know, I guess what, what strides have you seen then, you know, with that training and whatnot? Where have you seen the biggest gains on your end, you know, leading into Pro Day next week? Yeah, uh, I say overall just everything. Uh, knowledge because I've been able to spend just more time just, you know, studying the game. Um, my body, uh, I put on a lot of good, you know, good muscle, um, just, you know, getting faster, you know, a lot stronger in the 225 as far as bench. Just like overall as a football player, you just, you see the the, the, the areas of gains. Um, like I said, because it's, it's what you do all day. This is your job. And you spend all day doing that. And you're going to get better at everything. Man. And so it, within that too, just – uh, I guess moving forward, just for pro day, what are your goals for yourself? You mentioned the improvement in bench uh, with the 225 pounds that you, you'll have to do obviously next week. But you know, what goals are you setting for yourself in terms of 40 yard dash, the, the agility drills with the three cone and the 20 yard shuttle, and of course, you know, verticals and all that stuff and bench. What do you, what type of goals do you have set for yourself next week? Oh, definitely hot goals, especially in the 40. Goals always run fast. I'm shooting for like four four in anywhere between four three and four four. That's a good range for a corner. That's what I'm shooting for. Um, you know, bench, anything over 13, 13 plus would be would be good. Uh definitely shoot for fifteen. Um and then vert always shooting for about you know anything over thirty six plus. And then uh for bra, anything over past ten, you know, that's like the standard. So shoot for like ten two. Um and just stuff like that. So those are just a few numbers that that, that are my goals. Um, but honestly, you know, you got to go out there and do it. You got to, you know, this is what you prepare for. You've been spending the last two months doing it. So you just got to go out there and execute, you know, put it on the show. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, too, have you had a chance to talk with any NFL personnel or whatnot? And and have they, have they given you any feedback as to what, how they see you or just even conversations that you've had with them? Yeah, yeah. Um, I haven't really been done much conversation, but like a lot of like surveys and filling out questionnaires for teams, and um, you know, have your agent you know tell you what teams you know think of you and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, a few teams like the Colts, um, the Seahawks, uh, well, it's, it's it's a few other teams I can't really think of right now, but <laughs> <laughs> it's like I said, it's a long process of going through all that and filling out all these questionnaires and. Asking all these questions for these scouts, uh, it can get pretty, pretty uh, rigorous. But just a few teams. But I try to put my focus more on my training, and um, and when that day comes, when I get to you know go out there in front of them, you know, prove myself, you know, stuff like that. Now, I don't know if you were able to see this. We put together a little bit of a player card. You'll see this on, on the after show. But kind of just talking about your career as a Badger, man. You're a four-year starter in the Wisconsin secondary. Three seasons of 11-plus starts. That was 2018, 2019, 2021. Uh, and 44 career games played, 39 starts, 108 tackles, 19 total passes defended. Uh, you started 11 games last year. 28 tackles and a team high 10 passes defended. I know Notre Dame, you were busy. I think you had uh, four that, that game alone in terms of passes defended uh, and being challenged there, and, and you, you answered the call. On top of that, consensus, all Big Ten honorable mention in 2020 and 2021. How, you know, based off of your experience of, of being a Badger and, and what you experienced and how you played both, you are on the outside for the corner, you were able to play a little bit of slot too, you know, how do you feel your experiences at Wisconsin, just where, you know, defensive coordinator Jim Leonard placed you, how do you feel that can help you going into the next level and playing in the NFL? I think it helped me out a lot, especially, you know, playing in the, in the, in the Jim Leonard defense. Uh, we run an NFL-style defense. It's not cookie cutter or anything like that. You, know, you got to be able to communicate, especially as a nickel, uh, having that experience on the Coach Leonard. 
I feel like it prepared me, you know, to, for the next level as far as, you know, teams could put me anywhere. They could put me in the slot. They could put me in the outside. I'll come in and, and understand the defense right away. Um, just being disciplined, playing under the Badger defense. Um, you know, we run we run a pro style type of program here, and we, we get guys ready for the ne- for the next level. So any type of you know discipline, um, the mental side of the football game, and uh, athletic side of the game, I think I'm I'm prepared, and Wisconsin done a good job preparing for that. Have you had a chance to talk with any former teammates about the process, about the draft, about the pro day, about the mentality yeah. or the, the tra- I mean, obviously you've been going doing the physical training, but have you had talked about just kind of the grind of what to expect coming up next week, but also just the process overall in terms of talking with teams and you've already experienced, you know, you know, you said those questionnaires too. Yeah. So, um, I talked to a lot of guys actually, uh, mainly, uh, with Shaw Wild Goose. He, he just went through it last year. You know, talking to him, you know, because he was back home too as well. So getting a chance to train with him a little bit and kind of pick his brain about the whole process. Uh, Nick Nelson, Derek Tendu, Soldier and Shelton, uh, just to name a few former DBs that I talked to about this whole process. Um, but you know, once a Badger, always a Badger, and, and a lot of former Badgers always do a good job of you know reaching out and always being there for us former Badgers. To if we have questions, if we going through the same process they went through. Um, so having those former teammates, uh, you know, in my corner and just helping me out through the whole process is fun. And say with that too, how, you know, with your career, we lit, laid out all those stats for you. What do you remember about your time in Madison, man? I know you're gonna you're, you're here right now, but on the playing field, just you came in as an early enrollee, if I'm not mistaken. Gosh, it's been that long ago. Uh, and then you worked your way up to starter your second year, and you've had your, your, your accolades that you had. What do you remember from your time in Madison? Man, I I'd probably say just the my teammates throughout the years. That's the best part of it. Um, building all those relationships year in and year out because almost every year is a whole new team, is a whole new group of guys coming in, and you build it, and a group of guys leaving. So just building that relationship with guys, man, and um, you know, spending time with my teammates has to be like the highlight of my time being here. Um, definitely, you know, going out on that field with those guys, they made it what it is, and they made my time here you know special. And so, you know, kind of looking, talking about your teammates, that cornerback room, I know, you know, Dean is now going to be playing wide receiver. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, you have Alexander Smith, who started for you for a couple of games uh, this past year. There are some additions in that defensive backfield. Who in your eyes do you feel will, you know, how do you feel this quarterback room will step up next year without you and Caesar Williams for sure? And, and, just, and for that matter, Dean moving over to offense. And who should fans be on, on the lookout for? Yeah, uh, I definitely say you know Alex Smith. He's been in the program for a while. He's kind of seen seen what it takes to to play on, on that defense at a high level. So um, he's the older guy in the room as far as you know, experience and being there. So I'm excited for him and, and the big jump he's going he's going to take. And then I'm also excited for, uh, for Cedric Dort from Kentucky. Uh, me and Ced is actually uh, we good friends because um, he's from the same area I'm from down in Florida. Uh, and kind of just, you know, seeing him play, you know, growing up um, and hearing the good things about him at Kentucky. Uh, I really think he's going to be the guy that kind of, you know, shock everyone, come in and, you know, as a transfer and show everybody what he's about. I think he's ready. Um, I think he's going to take a big jump this year, man. He's going to be good for us. And then, you know, uh, you know even the young guys that we uh, we have, um, you know, Ricardo Hallman, another Florida kid, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited for him. He, he's gotten a little taste of uh, some field action last year. So uh, that should give him a lot more you know, confidence um, and him being comfortable going out on the field next year for us. So, and then um, there's a lot of guys in that room. There's going to be some good competition. I'm, I'm excited to see how it plays out this spring. I know I'm going to be here a little bit to kind of you know, get a couple practices and see what those guys are doing. But there's going to be a lot of competition. You, know, you got a kid from UCLA who came in. Um, I heard he's yep. Yeah, Jay Shaw, I heard he's really good. I'm excited to see how he how he turns out in, in our defense. I know I know Coach Leonard, man, he's going to draw some good things for those guys, but there's going to be a lot of competition. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to see how it plays out. You know, within the – talk about Cedric Dort. You know, what what qualities do you see out of him? Have you seen from him, you being friends from the same area down in South Florida, what what skill sets do you think he has that can help that Wisconsin secondary? Uh, definitely his confidence. That's the one thing that kind of sticks out, you know, especially him being a Florida kid. And then his his he's long. You know, he's he's not a small corner. He's a long, long arms, long corner. Uh, really good and press man. So you know that fits our our style of defense very well. Um, 
then him being in, in at Kentucky and playing in the SEC, I'm pretty sure you know he's used to the competition. Um, he's seen you know good receivers, you know, you know game in and game out being in the SEC, so he knows what it takes to play at a high level. So I'm willing, I'm, like I said, I can't wait to see him put all that together in the Big Ten. And then, you know, looking ahead, too, like we, we do these quick hitters. We have a little bit of fun at the end of the, the interviews. Uh, we always ask about breakout players for, for 2022. Let's we'll start on the defensive side of the ball. In your eyes, in your opinion, who do you think will be a breakout player on defense for the 2022 season? Breakout player, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, Cedric Dort. We just talked about him. I think he's going to be the breakout player. Like I said, you know, him being you know, a transfer and nobody kind of really you know, seeing him play. I think he's going to be that breakout player in the secondary for us. And then uh, I'll probably say um, Hunter uh, Wolder. Hunter, man, he's a dog, man. As a freshman, he you know he, he stood out for us a lot, um, making plays as a, as a freshman. You know, at safety, that's kind of hard to do because of the defense because a lot of thinking. So I think you know, him again last year to kind of learn to play, but he's going to be able to just play even more faster this year for us. And I think he's going to be that breakout player in the, in the secondary. And then offensive side of the ball, you've had to go up against some of those guys, either scout team or you know you guys are going to practice for fall camp uh, or spring ball. Who do you think will? Uh, who do you think's the breakout player on offense for twenty twenty two? Yeah, um, I, I'm going. I'm going to go save Graham Mertz, man. I know he kind of broke out you know, early before, but I think it's going to be a good year for Graham. Um, but like I say, you know, I'm a new coordinator. Uh, I think he's going to do a good job of, like, you know, catering to Graham's uh, attributes and making him a better player. And I think he's ready. I think he's hungry. Just, you know, the time that I've been back and seeing how he's been working uh, these past couple of days, he, he's locked in, man. So uh, I'm definitely putting my money on five. And he's going to get the job done this year. Uh, you know, as a player, for that matter, real quick, what do you, you know, what progressions did you see out of Graham, you know, towards that end of last year? You know, what strides did you see out of him, you know, in, in that campaign in 2021? Yeah, I'll probably like the one game that you know, I noticed the most was, you know, the Michigan game before he got hurt. He played a real consistent game. And then um, he just started being more consistent. You know, that's that's what we need out of Graham. He's a great player. He, he got the talent. It was just about him, you know, putting together and being consistent. You know, he started to do that a lot more towards the end of the year making the right throws, making the right reads, and getting comfortable. Um, so, like I said, he had to get his confidence back for, at the, you know, for a little bit, but you know, nobody never really lost hope in ground. Um, like I said, man, he, he's a great kid. He's a great leader. He's been doing a good job uh, doing that so far. Last question for you before we let you go, Fayon. You know, what's next for you guys? So Pro Day is what, Wednesday, correct? Coming up uh, the, the 9th? So then from there, uh, what's, you know, after pro day, uh, what do you, are you going to stay in mass and you go back, go back to Florida? What's, what's kind of, you know, obviously if NFL teams, you know, beckon and, and they want to see you, obviously that's, that's another thing, but what's your schedule? What's, what's your anticipated schedule moving forward after pro day? Um, so I'm going to, after pro day, I'm going to stay for probably like a week or so, uh, doing interviews with teams, uh, workouts, they want to work me out and, um, and doing that type of stuff. And then once I'm done with that, you know, meeting with teams and doing workouts with teams, probably going to go back home down to Florida and get back with my trainer and really just get ready for whatever opportunity comes my way. Whether that's getting drafted or a free agent and just going into a camp and, you know, kind of earning my spot and proving who I am as a player. So just getting ready for that, man. You know, the training doesn't stop at the pro day. You got to, you know, got to keep going and get ready for the football side of it. Now you're not just training, you know, for certain drills. You're training for football. So whether that's like, you know, the mental side of the game, uh, you know, working with my technique down in Florida with my trainer, and like I said, just getting ready to go out and improve myself. Fam, yeah, man, we always appreciate you talking with us, man, chatting with us. Uh, thank you for your time always during your time as a Badger, uh, whether win or loss. I think every month, almost every Monday availability at times you were there uh, answering questions. I know that I think you were trying you and Matt uh, Henningsen were in, and Jack were going back and forth sometimes during that <laughs> the, the weekly Monday meetings and whatnot. But uh, but yeah. anytime you've made it, you've been available, man, appreciate your time. Also, man, best of luck, uh, warmest wishes for what's ahead, and uh, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we'll see you uh, coming up next week uh, down at the uh, McLean Center, and and then, like I said, best of luck, and looking forward to seeing your next part of your journey. I mean, appreciate you. Thank you.
Folks, that's Fayon Hicks, Wisconsin cornerback. This is Jay Kokorowski. We're going to let you guys go. Uh, we'll have more coming up on Badger Blitz TV this week. Y'all have a great Thursday. We'll talk to you soon.